We will now call the order, order the regular meeting of the police jury dated Thursday, May 19th, 2011. And we will stand for the invocation and remain standing for the pledge. I'd like to uh, introduce uh, Steve James, pastor of Trinity Baptist Church, and also my friend to do our invocation for us. Father, we come before you this evening thanking you for the opportunity we have together to assemble in a position like this. I thank you for the men and the women on the police jury. Father, I ask that you give them wisdom and insight as they look over the various items this evening. Father, that they have the well-being of all of Calcasieu Parish in mind, and Father, that you would help them to uh, just to uh, see and have a vision of who we are, where we are, and what we can be. I thank you for them and for the willingness to serve and be part of this great community. It's in your name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Clyde. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Brother Steve. Roll call, Madam Secretary. Yes, sir. Mr. Andrew Pont? Here. Mr. Collins? Here. Mr. Farnham is out of town this evening. Mrs. Griffin? Present. Mr. Gidry? Here. Mr. Hassan was unable to attend this evening. Mr. Landry? Here. Dr. Mackey? Present. Mr. McMillan is also out of town this evening. Mr. Scott? Here. Mr. Spell? Here. Mr. Stelly? Here. Mr. Sia? Present. Mrs. Trimmy? Here. And President Brain? Uh, here. You do have a quorum. Thank you, Kathy. Uh, we'll go to item five. Let me first say, uh, if you'd like to speak on any uh, item on the agenda tonight, there's some blue cards in the back of the room. If you would, just fill it out and bring it up front to Jessica, and she'll get it to us. Also, if you have a uh, cell phone, just ask that you silence it, please. Uh, with that said, we'll go to item five, presentation of a certificate to Mr. Ronnie Hendricks of the Washington American Marion High School in recognition of winning the 110-meter high hurdle and 300 meter hurdle individual events on at the 2011 track and field state championship. Ms. Griffin and Ms. Coll Mr. Collins. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I would also ask that you join us at the podium. Are the students from Washington Marion present? Until they come in, shall we go to number six, please? Oh, yes, ma'am. We can do that. Come back to five. It's five and six are together, sir. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Number six, presentation of a certificate to Miss Thompson of Washington Marion High School in recognition of winning the 100-meter low hurdle and 300-meter hurdle individual events at the 2011 Track and Field State Championship. Thank you, sir. I think they're both here. Okay, thank you. Uh, to my colleagues and all of our uh, visiting friends, uh, we're so pleased to, to present to you this afternoon two young students from the Washington Marion Magnet High School who excelled in track events. And I'm going to give their coach the honor of presenting these recognitions to them. And my president, Mr. Collins, and I will wait for them over here to shake hands. And we want to congratulate you also for your hard work. As a matter of information, the police jury is pleased, as usual, to recognize our students in the parish because we know that hardworking, dedicated students usually produce uh, productive citizens, and that is what we promote in Kakashu Parish, and we're so proud. So at this time, after you do your presentation, would you join us over here, please? Hello, I'm Coach Joseph, and I would like to thank you for acknowledging our kids on this afternoon. Uh, first, I have Ronnie Hendricks, and he was the state champion in the 110-meter hurdles and the 300-meter hurdles. Uh, next, I have Tierra Thompson, who was also the state champion in the 110-meter hurdles and the 300-meter hurdles, and she will be attending Southeastern University on the track scholarship.
Please, you would also like to acknowledge and thank the parents also for working hard with our students in Kakashu Parish. Thank you so much. Okay, item number seven is presentation of certificates and trophy to the Hamilton Christian Academy boys in track and field team and coaches for winning the 2011 Class 1A Outdoor Track and Field State Championship. Ms. Griffin. Thank you, sir. Mr. President, please join me, and I've also asked Mr. Size to join me also. Okay, do you want me to go ahead and do item eight, too? You can, sir. Presentation of certificates and trophy to the Hamilton Christian Academy girls track and field team and coaches for winning the 2011 Division II Indoor Track and Field State Championship. Thank you, sir. It seems as if though we've uh, been uh, visited quite frequently from this school and we're so proud of Hampton Christian Academy. And I have always been impressed with uh, someone who is consistent with what they do and their track team is awesome and I am so pleased to have them back here again. I think on three occasions we had them here. So at this time we're going to ask the coach to come up and we will do the presentation to the coaches because we know that leadership from the coaches is very important for success with our kids and we want to thank you and your staff all of the hard work that you do. Okay. This is the head coach right here. <laughs> uh, and this is a presentation by the Kakashu Parish Police Jury on this 19th day of May 2011 to Coach Johnny Giardino. Giardino, head coach of the Hampton Christian Academy track and field team for winning the 2011 Division II Indoor State Championship and the 2011 Boys Class A1 Outdoor State Championship. Please give them a hand. <laughs> Congratulations, Coach, for a job well done. And if you would be kind enough to bring your coaches up yes, and acknowledge them I'm also. Sure should, I just, should I just bring them all up at one time? You, because they will all read the same. We're so proud of them for assisting you. And we'll ask them to stand on this side and we'll take pictures with them. Call their names. I have their. Congratulations. Yes. Thank you. We'll give, we'll give that to them. Guys, y'all can come back and I'll hand you off the tip. Uh, Coach Robert Hartz, who is not present today. His son is a professional track athlete and he's watching him run in Houston and I don't blame him. Coach Chris Griffin. Chris, Coach Brian Saram. Where's Brian Saram? He's he's still a coach. Where's Mr. Brian at? Oh, there he is. He <laughs> slipped up on me in that blue. <laughs> coach Andre Matthews. <laughs> coach Dre brought his fan club. Coach Roderick James, I don't know if Roderick's here yet, but I'll hold that for him. So I want to recognize uh, Assistant Coach Tim Meyer. He helped us significantly. I don't think Tim's here. He's working out of town. His son is a Volta for us. Coach Meyer was very good for us as well. Coach Byron Hickson. <laughs> Coach Ted, Ted Dupan is not present. He works for the Sheriff's Department. He's probably on duty somewhere today. And that concludes the coaching staff. Uh, the, our coaches do a tremendous job. It's as she mentioned earlier, you can't build a, a winning track tradition like we have at Hamilton Christian without a lot of help. And I have the best help anywhere. These guys are dedicated to what they do. Uh, all of them coach boys and girls, both, and do a great job. And we've been blessed and fortunate at Hamilton Christian, we've won three state championships and a runner-up in just a short span of two years, and you can't do that with a lot, without a lot of help and a lot of dedication. And, of course, without uh, great athletes, we wouldn't be very well either. So, bottom line, we do appreciate the coaching staff and the kids. Thank you.
call out the boys? Please. Coach, this is a certificate for the boys right here. They're not ready for that yet. We're going to take pictures. I appreciate okay. that. Okay. I'll come back and get that. Again, we thank the coaches for their staff. Uh, we have so many students that we're going to acknowledge. I don't know how you're going to take the pitches. Shall I ask them all come up as we've done before? Okay, Coach. And Mr. Size now. You, you may. <laughs> okay, at this time we're going to uh, allow the coach to recognize the, the boys to, uh, that you have for the state championship. And this is the trophy that we have to present to the nice. boys. And thing. So I'll hold this Very good. While, you, while you call their names out, and then we'll meet. I'll uh, surely do that. If that's OK, okay. do it like that. That'll be great. You want me to just hand you these as I call them out? No. Yeah, because if I don't know, I, don't, I won't be able to call out the names if I don't have them. We're going to call them up uh, as close to alphabetical order as we can. Uh, Aaron Bro was our shot putter. Aaron Bro. Congratulations, Aaron. Trey Biddle. I don't know if Trey here is, is here today, but Trey Biddle also. Yeah, I'll just let you hold this, and then uh, anybody that's not here. Spencer Stowicki. Here you go. Zach Stevens. Robert Bertrand. Is Robert here? I don't know. We'll just hold on to that one. Robert Bertrand. Cameron Meyer. <laughs> Dean Sonier. Caleb McIntyre. <laughs> Chris Toussaint. We'll make sure Chris gets that. Jalen James. Marco Richard. <laughs> Poor guy. He's never on time, never. He'll, he'll be here by the time we walk out. <laughs> you think I'm joking? <laughs> I'm not joking. Justin Griffin. <laughs> ben Avery. Dalton Bailey. <laughs> Ethan Benoit. Blair Henderson. Alex Hauser. Okay. We're going to go up now and do this with the boys first before we come back and do the girls. Is that clear? How do you want us to do it? Okay. It's going to be so crowded we won't get up there. I'm going to move. Let me read this. This is so special. 
this is something that we don't usually give often because uh, we only give them to state champs. So, and it's rather he heavy too. It is state champions. It's, it is champions. They just messed it up right there, but it's still, <laughs> you know me, I. Wasn't a police jury. No, it is. It is 1A champions. They just did a typo there That's and they put right. runner up. It's not runner up. They are state champions. I can it's okay. You. So this award is presented with pride and appreciation by the Cactus Parish Police Jury on Thursday, May the 19th, 2011, to the Hampton Christian Academy Boys Track and feel and coaches. Okay, and at this time, we would like Coach to uh, come up and acknowledge his girls. So if the guys could please be seated. We thank you so much. We're so proud of you, and we want to see you back next year at this time. say anything first or would you like me to? well uh, again we would like to also thank uh, the coaches and the staff the uh, and also the parents for for supporting these young people as I stated earlier we know the importance of family support for our teenagers and our youth that's trying to make a difference in this society and we're proud as citizens of Kakashu Parish to always welcome and be a part of such activities and now we will ask coach to acknowledge his girls and we'll do this also to save time we have another uh would you give me that coach another trophy for coach and his staff and his girls and it will read as follows the lady warriors 2011 district to indoor track and field state champions and this is presented with pride and appreciation by the Cactus parish police jury on Thursday, May the 19th, 2011, to the Christian Hampton Christian Academy track, girls track, and field team and coaches. So, Coach, again, we'll put it off a side, and then we'll take a picture in a minute. And, young ladies, when you come up, would you just make a circle here, and we'll take pictures. I will say this. is dip. Ooh. Just send me a bill. Uh, it is extremely difficult uh, to win a state championship uh, in any sport, and only one team can do it, and, and we're blessed and fortunate to have a boys' and a girls' team to win a state championship in the same year. It's an outstanding accomplishment. And it is a testament to our kids. We do have great parents, uh, the best I've ever been associated with. And another thing I'm extremely proud of, both boys' and girls' track teams both had GPA averages of over 3.0, and that is... To be, that's a big group. Great group of kids. Okay, here we go. Brianna Sorum. Not short. You're not short. Kiera. Kiera Ardwan, she is not here today, but she also was part of that state championship team. Nicole Williams. There we go again. Jeannie Kutu Marcotte. Still can't say. One of these days. Kennedy Moe. <laughs> 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 
Sophie Trafford. Sarah Miller. Christine Tarver. Emily Fontenot. Casey McIntyre. <laughs> Alyssa Bertrand. <laughs> Nikki Dia Griffin. And we want to uh, thank all of the coaches, our students that we're so proud of, and the parents. And we are just so thankful that you came. Nikki. Congratulations. We appreciate you, too. What about this? Just put them together. I think the boys went by. Okay, 6 o'clock action. Where are we? Okay. And coach was correct, his student who was missing showed up. <laughs> Okay, we're going to skip uh, item our six o'clock action for a few minutes. Item nine, and go to we're going to take up item ten, <coughs> eleven, and twelve. <coughs> item ten, take appropriate action on applications for liquor and beer permits. Mr. Vickers, Mr. President, we have uh, three applications. We recommend they all be approved. I'll move. Second. Okay, I have a motion by Mr. Landry and a second by Mr. Guidry. Is there any discussion? Any objection? Hearing none. Motion carries. Item 11, consideration of approval Move on 11. of all payment of all current invoices. Uh, motion by Mr. Andrew Pont and a second by Ms. Griffin. Is there any discussion? Any objection? Hearing none, motion carries. Uh, item 12, consideration of approving the minutes of the regular second. meeting of second. the police jury dated April 21st, 2011. I have a motion by Mr. Sias and a second by Dr. Mackey. Is there any discussion? Any objection? Hearing none, motion carries. Uh, it's six o'clock. We'll go to go to item nine. Should I wait till seven? Okay. Uh, number nine. Hold a public hearing at six p.m. as a result of notice provided to the owner of properties described below, in accordance with Article Two, Chapter Six of the Code of Ordinances of the Calcasieu Parish of Louisiana, ordering said owners to show cause as to why structures on said property should not be condemned. 
Mr. Robinson. Thank you, Mr. President. Good evening. Uh, our first structure on the agenda tonight is going to be uh, 9.1 at 7152 Monk Street. This is in the Bell City area. Uh, it's one house. It's owned by Anita Clarice Duan et al. And we recommend this structure be condemned and removed in 30 days. So moved. Second. Okay, I have a motion by Mr. Staley and a second, uh, second by Dr. Mackey. Is there any discussion? Any objection? Hearing none, motion carries. We'll go to item 9. Point. Oh, is there anybody in the audience like to speak on that item? Seeing none, motion will carry. 924314 Queen Street. Mr. Robinson. This is in the Mossville area. This is one house. The owner is Ola Brown Reshord. And we recommend this structure be condemned and removed in 30 I'll days. Move. Second. I have a motion by Mr. Scott and a second by Mr. Stelly. Anybody in the audience have would like to speak on this item? Seeing none, that uh, any objection? Hearing none, that motion will carry. Uh, 9 3 is 2763 Ryan Road. Mr. Robinson. This is in the South Lake Charles area. Um, it's a manufactured home. The owner is Erston Pridium, and we recommend this structure be condemned and removed in 30 days. So moved. Second. I have a motion by Mr. Staley and a second by Mr. Scott. Uh, anybody in the audience like to speak on this item? Seeing none, that uh, without any objection, motion to carry. Item 9.4, 3542 Harmon, Broussard Road. Mr. Robinson. This is in the North Sulphur area. Uh, it's one manufactured home. The owner is Roy Grevenberg, and we recommend this structure be condemned and removed in 30 days. So moved. Second. second. I have a motion by Mr. Stelly and a second by Dr. Mackey. Anybody in the audience like to speak on 9.4? Seeing none, with no objection, that motion will carry. Uh, 9.5, 6427 Barton Drive. Mr. Robinson. This is in the LeBlue Settlement area. It's one manufactured home. The owner is a Jerry Dale Busby at Oaks. We recommend this structure be condemned moved. and moved in 30 second. days. Okay, I have a motion by Dr. Mackey and a second by Mr. Stelly. Uh, is there anybody in the audience like to speak on 9.5? Seeing none, that motion will carry. Uh, 9.6, 3748 East Burton Street. Mr. Robinson. This is in the Mossville area. Uh, it's one house. The owner is Iona Hadnot Jackson et al. We recommend this structure be condemned and removed in 30 days. So moved. Second. second. Okay, I have a uh, motion by uh, Mr. Scott and a second by Ms. Griffin. Is there anybody in the audience like to speak on 9.6? Seeing none, that item will carry. 9.7, 566 Edson Street. Mr. Robinson. Uh, this is in the Sulphur area. Uh, it's one house. The owner is Johnny Marvin Garrison, and we recommend this structure be condemned and removed in 30 days. Move. Second. I have a motion by Mr. Andrew Pont and a second by Mr. Collins. Uh, any Go ahead, Dr. Max. Has this ever been here before? It just looks awful familiar to me. This no, sir, it sure hasn't, oh. Dr. Mackey. Thank you. Uh, anybody in the audience like to speak on 9.8? Okay, just come to the mic and uh, state your name and address for the record, please. Uh, 9.7, I'm sorry. Johnny Martin Garrison. Our <coughs> uh, residence is 566 Edson Street property he's referring to is 568 Edson Street, a garage apartment next door. I'm currently dismantling it to the best of my ability by myself <clears throat> and removing it. I have a building, a demolition permit. As I told Mr. Robertson, it was scheduled for demolition in March. Due to the fact that uh, Kelly Barnes, my ex-wife, took my income tax return, which was earmarked to pay the demolition for it. I'm left with tearing it down by hand. This is where I stand. Okay. You know, what y'all decide to do with it, it's up to y'all. Okay, Mr. Andrew Pont, go ahead. Hey, Mr. President, how much more time do you think you're gonna need? Uh, a couple of months. I mean, the permit states it's good for 180 days, which is August. But, you know, 30 days. Go ahead, Mr. Robinson. Down and out, Mr. Robinson. Yeah, he did purchase a permit in early February of this year. The permit is only good, and it states on there for 30 days. Okay, well, 
Well, I would move that uh, in light of the hardship that he's going through that we give him an extra 30 days and then come back after that and just let us know where you are. Staff will go out and inspect and see what you've done. That's and if fine. you're making some progress, then we we'll probably will extend it again. Second. I second. So we'll get it down and get it safe. Okay, so uh, we have a motion by Mr. Andrew Pont to, to extend it, give you 30 more days. And Mr. Collins, that was your second? Yes. Okay. Uh, we appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Any other, any objection to that? Mr. Scott? I don't have an objection. I just have a question. Mr. Vickers, on, when they get these demolition permits, are they required to have a dumpster out there? I mean, is he just taking it down? I mean, where are we at on that? Well, I think it just really depends on the the amount of demolition. Where are we? You know, how much you've really got. Um, you know, some of these smaller houses and so forth, you can probably tear those down and, you know, it won't be um, that significant. You get something that's two-story, uh, it probably does need some type of dumpster. you mind if I ask him a question? Uh, you, you come up to what do you plan on doing with like the insulation, some of that stuff that's airborne? How are you as you can do this a little I'm at a time? I'm bagging it as I go and disposing of it on Swisco Road at the dump. Okay. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Scott. Any other discussion? Any objection? That motion will carry. Thank you, sir. Thank you. 9.8, 3129 East Burton Street. Mr. Robinson. Uh, this is in the North Sulphur area. Uh, it's one house. The owner is Elvis Aaron Laughlin, and we recommend this structure be condemned and removed in 30 days. Second. Okay, I have a motion by Mr. Sias and a second by Mr. Stelly. Is there anyone in the audience like to speak on 9.8? Seeing none, that, uh, without any objection, that motion will carry. Thank you, Mr. Robinson. Thank you. Okay. Okay, we're going to go to item 13, consideration of adopting a resolution indicating objection, no objection to the well, following the approved, all all approved projects in Calcasieu Parish. Uh, I have a motion by Mr. Collins and a second by Mr. Guidry. That's on all bullets, Mr. Collins? Yes, sir. Okay. 13-1, uh, proposal of gravity drainage district number five of Ward 4, care of Lawsaw Engineering, Inc., to dredge, remove approximately 440 four cubic yards of sediment to restore 500 linear feet of existing ditch to 12 feet wide by two feet deep for drainage improvements. Uh, the, the planning staff recommends the, that the police jury indicate no objection to this project application. 13.2 is proposal of Creative Casinos LLC to clear, grub, and grade 236.71 acre track deposit 1.600 1,600,000 cubic yards of on-site and halt in earthen material and 68,000 cubic yards of native soil dredged to create 245 feet by 345 feet slip, all to prepare site conditions to support an installation of a riverboat casino and construction of a hotel, golf course, restaurant, tennis court, swimming pool, parking garage, surface parking areas, and other structures. <laughs> 25 cent words get to you, don't <laughs> I skipped that word. Uh, the planning staff recommends that the police jury indicates no objection to this project. 13-3. Proposed proposal of Sitgo Petroleum Corporation care of CK Associates LLC to clear, excavate, grade, and deposit fill as required to expand a previous authorized spoil storage area to and containment levy. The planning staff recommends that the police jury indicate no objection to this project application. Uh, any other discussion? Any objection? Hearing none, motion carries. Item 14, take appropriate action on RZ08 dash 003 dash 11 which is a request by Daryl and Deborah McCauley to rezone from A1 agriculture to C2 general commercial to allow commercial development Move dollar on general 14. on highway 3059 in ward 8 have motion by Mr. Staley and second by Mr. Sice uh, go ahead and read the the uh, agenda note here the planning and zoning 
board met on Thursday, May 17, 2011, voted unanimously to recommend that the request be granted with the following stipulations. One, that the development adhere to the site plan on file. Two, that the that all parking and drives must be hard surfaced. Three, that the dumpsters be placed in a six foot fence containment area. Four, that a landscape plan must be submitted and approved. Five, that the development must comply with the Calcasieu Parish Repair Stormwater Ordinance. Uh, any other discussion? With all stipulations, Mr. President. Thank you, uh, Mr. Stelly. And uh, with no other discussion, any objection? Hearing none, motion to carry. Item 15, take appropriate action on RZ0300411, which is a request by Preston and Katie Richard to amend ordinance number 3490 to expand an existing manufactured home park from five manufactured home spaces to eight manufactured home spaces and develop 14 recreational vehicle spaces, 22 spaces total at 7896 Nelson Road in Ward 3. The Planning and Zoning Board met on Tuesday, May 17, 2011 and voted six for and three against to recommend that the request be granted with the following stipulations. And I'll just let y'all read the stipulations. We have a read. motion to discuss by Mr. Scott. Okay, I have a motion to discuss by Mr. Scott. Yeah, is Mr. Miss Richard here? I don't see anybody. Well, I have a few questions before I could just move this. So if we want to defer action for 30 days, or I really would like, I've never. Who would you like to address? To? Well, I would like to address the, the applicants. Oh. Who I'd like, and they are very, should be here. I mean, aren't they required to be here? They should no, be here. They're not required to be here. <clears throat> well, I'm not going to make the motion. If I mean. Mr. Scott, as one of the people uh, who was there, I would suggest that you might ask uh, myself and Ms. Wallace, we may know the answer to the question. It may not be a choice matter with him. He may have announced it at the meeting. I invite you to do that. We may say we don't know, but. Okay. Ms. Wallace. <laughs> I'd like to volunteer her. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Jennifer. And I'm Jennifer Wallace, Assistant Director of Advanced Planning. Okay. Uh, I never spoke to, you know, I only heard the opposition to this is where my phone rang, I never heard from the applicant, so I'm really not sure. You know, the concern was they wanted to make sure it was more of a sugarloaf community, and which apparently this gentleman is willing to do. It looks like it's going to be a great property. However, you know, I wanted to ask him some questions. Like most of these new mobile home places, they require a cert up to a certain year before they allow the trailers in. Did he did he put that? Is he say he's going to do that? He stated that uh, he didn't want anything that was over 10 years old. But we didn't stipulate anything. The, the board didn't, but he did state that at the meeting. Well, we know stipulations is the only thing that counts, so I would like for him to have been here to answer that. The second thing is, you know, why did they deny it five years ago or six years ago? Any idea? The planning and zoning back when they denied it? They, they when I look back in the minutes, there really didn't appear to be a reason. There was um, some opposition that came out in 2005. <clears throat> uh, so the only guess that I could make is that it, it was based upon the opposition, but Mr. Vickers may be able to shed some light if he recalls that. Well, you know, that was some time ago. Um, I think that uh, at the time that they rejected it, uh, the Planning and Zoning Board and probably even subsequently the police jury wanted bigger lots. And they wanted them to be on 16,000 square feet lot, okay. if I, as I remember it. And I have one last question. On his drawing here, he, he wants to dig the pond. Is that part of this, I mean, this pond to be able to dig it to bring dirt in, that's allowed? Or has he got to get a special permit for that? As long as it's on his property, it would be considered a pond. As long as he doesn't no, take he any keeps dirt it on off his of property. it. He cannot haul any of it out. That's right. In other words, it's got to stay on the premises of the property. And the last thing that I'm noticing on this drawing is he has an RV storage area. This is not, is this going to be considered commercial now to where he's allowed to store RVs in that back lot over there? Because they, that's going to get a little touchy as far as having an RV storage. Is it an RV park or is it an RV storage is what I would like to know because I wouldn't want to pass it the way it is with this saying RV storage. I would consider it a, a park. He did not indicate that it would be RV storage as though you would lease a spot to store it there like the toy shed. He did not indicate that to us. Well, but I would want to indicate that 
as part of the stipulations and I don't I'm just not quite sure what I should do at this point with not him here to answer and at least compromise along the way so I'm kind of in the in a I only listened to the eight or ten people that called me so yeah what should I do anybody <laughs> Mr. Mr. Brain yes go ahead. let me uh, as well as I can let me try to briefly outline the applicants position and the opposition uh, this applicant bought this in April uh, there's a house on there and he and his wife are going to live in it uh, he and she are both retiring very shortly uh, his idea is to run this for himself uh, he says that he and his wife participate in stock shows and rodeos uh, and that they have a lot of friends who do that his intention for the RV park is to let them be able to come and he said I'm not talking about pull by pickup I'm talking about two hundred fifty thousand dollar machines and he said they may come here and stay here for a season so he said they could be here maybe as much as two months but I don't intend for them to be here permanently <clears throat> main complaint of the uh, of the opposition was a uh, a nice man who's a Louisiana State uh, policeman. He lives in the uh, group of homes that's just to the north. Uh, he was complaining mostly about the, the uh, trailer park in between, which was established in 1980, mm -hmm. and apparently is in not very good condition. Uh, and what they were saying is, before we give him a, a permit to open this one, why don't we make him clean up the other one? Well, it soon became very obvious that he didn't own the other one. And I will say this, I suspect the reason that there's nobody here is that afterwards, I saw both of them out in the hall shaking hands and talking with each other, and apparently there were some assurances so that neither the applicant nor the opponent is here tonight. No judgment on my part, that's just what I know. Well, I'm, I'm all right with it, passing it, but I just don't want it to turn into an RV storage like the tourist shed where when you drive by, you see a bunch of them just stuck in the back. That would be my only, the project, that's great as long as they shook hands. I didn't hear from the opposition after it was passed, so, you know, I'm okay with it. But I wouldn't want it to be an RV storage center because now we're into a commercial type situation. So that, that would be a little, can I stipulate in there? No. Uh, and how would that stipulation, how should it be stated? You could just state that there'd be no RV storage on site, that it has to be habitable units connected to utilities. Something along those lines. I don't like the wording I need, Mr. <coughs> President. Okay. And then after that, I'd make a motion to approve. Okay. Uh, we have two speakers. Okay. Uh, two other jurors like to speak. Mr. Landry. Thank you, Mr. President. Yeah, I was just going to say I'm surprised that neither side's here. I got phone calls on it as well, and that's just odd that, that neither side's here. I mean, I would suggest whatever you want to do with it, whatever amendments you want to put on it, you put on there and we pass it like that and hey, he should have showed up. That's all I could say. Thank you. You're welcome. Ms. Griffin. Ms. Griffin. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. I, I share some of my concerns with Mr. Scott. Uh, and it seems like, just from reading this, it seems like uh, a lot of uh, additions, modifications were added on. Uh, to make it look better because right. the stipulations includes a lot of different things to help it and and my concern also is that uh, the owners are not here because of this project uh, this was rejected and now it's it's being approved I think the stipulations help that but I, I also I don't like approving anything unless uh, those individuals that's involved is here I rest my case, and then uh, whatever you decide to do, Mr. Scott, I'll support you. I, I just don't like approving anything. Adding stipulations, the owner is not here to know whether or not he's going to agree to that. <coughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you, Ms. Griffin. Is okay. there an appeal process for how, so many days once this is approved before it's actually put into? Um, are you asking if he would appeal that particular stipulation? or anyone, even the opposition. We do have an appeals process that's built in, but it's required to go before the 14th Judicial District Court. So I, I'm not sure that this gentleman would want to invest that type of money just to remove a stipulation. He might be better off filing another application asking for that stipulation to be removed. And on this gravel road, Mr. President? Yes, sir. Go ahead. And we're not doing these gravel roads. Now it is going to be either blacktop or concrete? Yes, right? sir. I'm going to approve it as it is with that stipulation that no on-site, you know, RV storage be allowed unless it's inhabited, and I'll approve that. Okay. That's your motion, Mr. Scott, and uh, second by Ms. Trimmy. 
Thank you, Jennifer. Is there Thank any you. other discussion? Any objection? That motion will carry. Thank you, Mr. Vice President. Uh, we'll go to item 16, consideration of adopting a resolution approving the renewal of the cooperative endeavor agreement between the police jury and the state of Louisiana Department of Natural Resources for the 2010-2011 Calcasieu Parish Local Coastal Program. We have a motion by Mr. Uh, Andrew Pont and a second by Mr. Landry. Is there any discussion? Any objection? Hearing none, that motion will carry. Item 17, consideration of adopting a, Move on, a process verbal and resolution prom promulgating the results of the election held on April 30, 2011 to authorize the operation of a riverboat casino by Creative Casinos, LLC, to be berthed along the land belonging to the Lake Charles Harbor and Terminal District situated in Calcasieu yes, Parish, Louisiana. I have a motion by Mr. Sias and a second by doc, uh, Dr. Mackey. Is there any discussion? Any objection? Hearing none, motion carries. Uh, item 18, take appropriate action on the request by the City of Lake Charles to adopt a resolution in support of the City's efforts to prohibit the sale of synthetic Good products morning. that mimic uh, illegal substance within the City and okay. further that copies of said resolution be forwarded to the Southwest Louisiana Legislative Delegation. Ms. Trimming. Thank you. Uh, I was so glad to see this uh, on the uh, agenda because I actually was going to uh, bring something up on behalf of the Calcasieu Parish Police Jury uh, concerning the synthetic products that mimic illegal substances. Uh, the city of De Quincey not only has uh, uh, pass an ordinance against this, they've already commandeered every convenience store in the city limits of De Quincey that had these on their shelves. Uh, and so what I would like to do with your approval, uh, for those that have made a motion and second, I would like to uh, amend this uh, request by the city of Lake Charles and add and the Calcasieu Parish police jury uh, to, uh, I like to revise this to include the Calcasieu Parish police jury uh, to adopt a resolution in support of the city of Lake Charles and the Calcasieu Parish police jury efforts to prohibit the sale of synthetic products that mimic illegal substances within the city of Lake Charles and Calcasieu Parish. Uh, and further that copies of the said resolution be forwarded uh, to the Southwest Louisiana Legislative Delegation. Okay, Ms. Trimmer, is that in the form of a motion? Yes, it is. If, if the others that made the motion in second would allow hey, me to I, make that. Who, who made the motion? Oh, Dr. Mr. Mackey. I thought I made it. Right? Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. I accept that. Okay. I have oh, go ahead, Mr. Smith. Uh, Ms. Trimmer, I think in order for us to do that, we'd have to have a, pass an ordinance. Uh, in order to cover the Calcasieu Parish rather than just a resolution. But let me say this, I read in the paper, I think yesterday, that the district attorney here, along with several other district attorneys, has introduced a bill in the legislature. I know it's come out of committee and was going before the floor, I believe, of the House uh, to make this statewide, make the sales of these products uh, illegal. I think, she I think we're okay. All I'm doing is a resolution. Yeah. I'm not doing an ordinance. In other oh, words, support. Okay, of I'm support. That, I'm just okay. uh, mimicking what the city of Lake Charles. Is that correct? Yes, Can please. I do that? Okay. If y'all have to pass it, obviously. Right. That would be uh, page two. But this is just to be sent <laughs> to our legislative delegation. Thank you. Uh, do you second it? Elizabeth? No, ma'am, I didn't. But Somebody else did. Oh, yes, I'll second yes. it for you now if it's Thank a you. new one. Thank you very much. I do, I do, uh, I'm, may I, Mr. Yes, President? Yes, you may. I'm, I mean, I wanted to uh, make a statement before Mr. Smith. I, I was just concerned. I'm in total agreement. I didn't know whether or not you could add on to something that the city had already sent us. I thought we would have, uh, have had to do something separate, a resolution separate. But either way it could be done is fine because that is something that we must do, must make a move in that. So I, I'm in agreement with that. I was just concerned since the city already made that request, can we go back in and request under their whatever they've done? So whatever way that it could be done, that's fine. It, it just depends on our staff, but I just think it yes. shows solidarity. 
think yeah. I, I think what we can do is word it along the lines of uh, what Ms. Trimmy said that it's more your resolution uh, in concert with the city of Lake Charles' resolution and Ms. Smith can word that appropriately. Right. I think we'll be okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Kathy, would you mind clarifying the mo that motion? Uh, the motion is to adopt a resolution supporting the city's efforts um, and joining with them basically to uh, prohibit the sale of synthetic products that mimic illegal substances within the city of Lake Charles and also the parish and then forwarding that resolution to the delegation. Okay. Uh, that motion was made by Ms. Trimmy and seconded by Ms. Griffin. That's correct. Uh, without any other discussion, is there any objection? Hearing none, that item will carry, which was 18. 18. We'll go to 19. Consideration adopting a resolution 19. approving a cooperative endeavor agreement between the police jury and the Imperial Calcasieu Museum for okay. funding in the amount of $12,000 for the Museum to Go program in area schools. I have a motion by Mr. Andrew Pont and a second by Mr. Guidry. Is there any discussion? Any objection? Hearing none, motion carries. Item 20, consideration of adopting a resolution approving the submittal of a so grant moved. application in the amount of $69,000 to the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development for HCV Family Self-Sufficiency Program Coordinator Salaries. I have a motion by Ms. Trimmy and a second by Mr. Size. Is there any discussion? I have a question, sir. Go ahead, Ms. Griffin. No, I'll, I'll, I'll just wait. That's okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, any uh, objection? <clears throat> Hearing none, that item will carry. Uh, item 21. Move on all bullets. Consideration of approving the following request from the Office of Juvenile Justice Services. Uh, and I have a motion by Mr. Landry on all bullets and a second by Mr. Guidry. And, and go ahead, Ms. Griffin. Thank you, sir. Uh, is Dane here? I saw Dane earlier. Dane, I read in the newspaper that the cuts were being made by the state of Louisiana in reference to juvenile justice and your department organizations. Will that have an effect on, on your department here? It, it or is that statewide? It is statewide. It could have an impact on our budget, uh, but a uh, very minimal level. The state office of juvenile justice, as you know, is different from our parish entity. That's the state organization. Kind of gets confusing sometimes about... Uh, Two years ago, they changed the name, uh, I guess, to model ours, I would say, but they did change the name on that, but very minimal, if at all. Now, Dane, on 21-1 here, what kind, are, what kind of money, are we talking about money involved with this or just uh, support? One, two, and three are kind of work all together. The first one is to develop a plan every year you have to. Two is the actual contract. Uh, for around $280,000. Now, those funds could be cut, and then three is actually for the data contract with the school board. Now, if the funds could be cut, where, where would the cut come from? Uh, if this program is separate from the OJJ money that you were talking right. about, so that money would be cut through LSU program, and it could, uh, from what we're hearing, it could be cut, so it, it would be taken out of our task program. Would you still be able to perform the duties? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Ms. Griffin. Okay, I'll go ahead and read all the bullets in the record. 21.1, adopt a resolution approving the submittal of any of an updated plan and any revisions thereafter to the Louisiana State University Office of Social Services Research and Development, which outlines the duties and responsibilities of the collaboration between the police jury, the City of Lake Charles, the Calcasieu Fair School Board, local law enforcement agencies, and the state service agencies from the Truancy Assessment and Service Center. 21.2, adopt a resolution approving a contract between the police jury and the Louisiana State University Board of Supervisors in the amount of $280,000 for the continuation of the Truancy Assessment and Service Center. Uh, bullet 21.3 is adopt a resolution approving the renewal of an agreement between the Calcasieu Parish Police Jury and the Calcasieu Parish School Board for the school board to provide attendance, tracking, monitoring, and related services for the Truancy Assessment and Service Center. 21.4, adopt a resolution approving the submittal of a continuation application and any revisions thereafter in an, in an amount 
up to $60,000 to the Louisiana Supreme Court for families in need of service assistance programs. Uh, I had a motion by Mr. Landry and all bullets and a second by Mr. Guidry. Is there any other discussion? Any objection? Hearing none, that motion will carry. Item 23. Move on 22. I'm 22. sorry, 22. Uh, consideration of adopting a resolution authorizing sure. advertising of an oil, gas, and mineral lease on a certain tract of parcel of land containing 0 0.227 acres more or less in Section 11, Township 11, South Range 9, West, in Ward 3. I have a motion by Mr. Scott and a second <coughs> by Dr. Mackey. Is there any discussion? Any objection? Hearing none, motion carries. Move on 23. Uh, uh, consider item 23 consideration of adopting a resolution proclaiming June 2011 as adopted cat month in Calcasieu Parish and further authorizing the director of development director of the Department of Animal Services and o Adoption Center to reduce the cost of all cat adoptions to $30 per adoption for the month of June 2011 I have a motion by Ms. Trimmy and a second by Mr. Landry. Is there any discussion? Go ahead, Mr. Trimmy. No, no discussion on that. Just before oh. we leave, I want to say something. Okay. Uh, no discussion. Any objection? Hearing none, motion carries. Uh, go uh, ahead, Ms. Trimmy. For those of you that may have uh, run out of May Hall jelly, <laughs> the uh, May Hall Festival is this weekend. It started today, tonight at 4 o'clock. It'll be uh, Friday and uh, Saturday all day. And uh, so... If you need your Mayhaw jelly fix, you need to head west and uh, have a really good time with some really wonderful people and pick up your Mayhaw jelly. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Trimmy. Go ahead, Mr. Scott. You are going to take care of us, though, huh? Yes. That, oh, I just, I just Merry Christmas. <laughs> Can I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Okay, we are adjourned.